there's a coalition of right. Trump voters, people who really like him. Mm -hmm. uh, they certainly are those. And then there's people who don't necessarily like him that much, but they still think he's less crazy than stuff that strikes them as aggressively anti-common sense. Right. That takes place on the left. You've lost touch with reality. That's just oh, really? not in this world. Uh -huh. I mean, you're just flat out wrong. I don't know if they're still sticking with it. My guess is they'll pivot. They'll go, oh, well, we, 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 we knew it was gonna, no, 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 no. You all said it would help her. You all said it, okay? You were all dead wrong about the politics of it. Well, let now me they'll pivot to, oh, but we're the most moral, pure people on earth. And if she loses, that's even better for trans. No, it'd be terrible for trans people if she loses. Trump's a nightmare for them. That's exactly what we're warning you about, because it's gonna lead to worse situation for trans people. Cenk Uyghur and Anna Kasparian recently went on a rant against Bill Maher and what Bill Maher had to say about Kamala Harris and the upcoming election. Now, Cenk and Anna Kasparian, they have some pretty spicy opinions about all these non-issues that are being made such a big deal out of. So let's check in on Cenk and Anna Kasparian pretty much melting down over uh, Bill Maher and his statements. Kamala's big, I think, uh, challenge here to win over the undecided voters is to convince them that she's not part of what they suspect she might be uh, sort of a stealth version of the worst excesses of the left. Mar believes that Kamala Harris has a woke problem and that yes, is the main reason why she is currently paralyzed in the polling. That is the main reason why Donald Trump has been able to close her lead nationally according to the polls. Now, let's hear him out. What exactly is he citing here as the reason for her so-called woke problem? There's a coalition of right. Trump voters, people who really like him, mm -hmm. uh, they certainly are those. And then there's people who don't necessarily like him that much, but they still think he's less crazy than stuff that strikes them as aggressively anti-common sense. Right. That takes place on the left. Right. So, and so that's why they keep running that ad about sex changes in right. prison. You know, like could you- And every football game. Could you get every yeah. foot, that's every, right. Every football game, could, I see. Could you get yeah. more uh, third rail words into one set? Right. <laughs> 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 yeah. Sex Prisoners, change operations. Sex change operations. Tax operation, payer, tax payer funded, funded. Yeah. It's illegal. No, it's, it's, prison, it it's, rings every single bell. I, they, they just yeah. want her to say, look, I get this about my my, my, the blue team, and it's on my to-do list. By the way, it's very easy to say, yeah, I said that in 2019. I was in a competitive thing. Now, she did say, I think she said this was the law under Trump, too. He didn't change it. But it's very easy to say, I don't believe that anymore. So Scarborough, by the way, is absolutely correct. I don't say that often on this show, but he is correct in that it was the policy or the law when Donald Trump was in office. He didn't make any effort to change it. And now he is basically spending tens of millions of dollars running campaign ads, targeting Kamala Harris for her questionnaire answer toward the ACLU when she was running in the Democratic primary in 2020. They asked her if she supported the policy and she said that she did. And so now he's using that against her. And you know, you can call him out for never doing anything about the policy, but the fact remains that it does appear that to some extent his attack against her is making some difference. So I, I wanna just quickly go into- The main difference between them two is that Donald Trump will be pretty blatant when asked about a certain topic, certain policy. Whereas Kamala Harris, she has basically no actual answers to any of the questions. It's just a bunch of word salad and nothing more. You ask Trump about this issue, that issue, geopolitics, wars, you name it. He's gonna be saying like this, 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 I'm gonna be doing this, I wanna do this. I don't know if I'll achieve it, but at least there's that. Whereas Kamala Harris is gonna be like, word salad and the people that are actually running the show behind her, they're gonna be the ones doing the decisions, not her. Let's go to graphic two here. Over the first half of October, former President Donald Trump and his allies poured more than $21 million into television ads attacking Vice President Kamala Harris over her past support of certain rights for transgender people, a message they have spread during nationally televised NFL games, college football broadcasts, and in battleground states. So the Trump campaign is betting 
any voters still like choosing between the two candidates will be swayed by this issue. In fact, the ads outpaced nearly every other topic Republicans have put in advertisements trying to sway the public during a critical closing stretch of the race ahead of crime, inflation and immigration and behind only taxation. And I wanna go to the ad so you guys know what we're talking about. I actually had never seen the ad. I don't think it's targeted toward people in California maybe, but this is what the ad is. Kamala supports taxpayer funded sex changes for prisoners. Surgery. Um, for prisoners. For prisoners, every transgender inmate in the prison system would have access. It's hard to believe, but it's true. Even the liberal media was shocked Kamala supports taxpayer funded sex changes. For if you enjoyed this type of content, leave a like and subscribe because I want to quit my construction job. Thank you. And subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out a ton. Let's get back to the video. Prisoners and illegal aliens. Every transgender inmate would have access. Kamala's for they, them. President Trump is for you. I'm Donald J. Trump and I approve this message. So not only is the Trump campaign banking on this ad being effective and making a difference with swing voters, it's essentially what Bill Maher believes is gonna work or make a difference as well. And I'm curious what you think, Cenk. Yeah, so there's two very different parts of this story. So first on the issue of are these ads working and is this the right way to go for the Republicans, Democrats, etc. That I agree with Bill Maher and Joe Scarborough on, and yes, I just vomited a little bit in my mouth. But guys, we <laughs> told you, and we got in a huge fight on the left over this, that it was not going to play well. And a lot of people on the left claim, no, we don't know anything. This is gonna pull great, and the American people want it, love it, and that extra for rights for transgender inmates getting surgery, etc. And if you didn't believe that, you are a Nazi and the American people don't agree with you. He's spending more money on this ad than almost any other ad because why they have internal polling showing it's working fantastic. It is driving away voters from Democrats at record numbers. So you can say, hey, I love the policy anyway, and we should fight for it in the long run. No problem, no problem. I don't agree with it. But we can have that debate, no problem, okay? But if you- Of course it's working because normal actual Americans care about taxes, they care about gas prices, they care about groceries, they care about, you know, just the usual boring stuff. Yeah, they care about their jobs not being taken away by some, I don't know, third world migrant or whatever. They care about illegal immigrants being housed in hotels near them. They care about normal stuff, actual policy. They don't care about prisoners getting sex changes on taxpayer money. Are we that insane? You live in a bubble where you think this helps Kamala Harris. You've lost touch with reality. Yes. That's just not in this world. I mean, you're just flat out wrong. I don't know if they're still sticking with it. My guess is they'll pivot. They'll go, of course. Oh, well, we, 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 we knew it was gonna, no, 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 no. You all said it would help her. You all said it, okay? You were all dead wrong about the politics of it. Well, let now me- they'll pivot to, but, oh, but we're the most moral, pure people on earth. And if she loses, that's even better for trans. No, it'd be terrible for trans people if she loses. Trump's a nightmare for them. That's exactly what we're <laughs> warning you about, because it's gonna lead to worse situation for trans people, not a better situation. Right, well, the moral argument has been the argument that they've been making. In fact, I remember that fight and the main point was, well, it's the right thing to do, who cares about the electoral consequences? And it's easy to say that when the election isn't right around the corner, but now the election is around the corner. And Kamala Harris was asked about it, by the way. Brett Baer asked in the context of the Fox News interview that she did with with him. And she said, quote, I think he spent $20 million on those ads trying to create a sense of fear in the voters because he actually has no plan in this election that is about focusing on the needs of the American people, which is an interesting thing to say considering the fact that most of her campaign is now focused on fear mongering about Donald Trump and how he's a fascist. That's fair, but that's a fine answer. I, you know, she's pivoting. That's over. not an answer, like she didn't answer for it. I'm right? saying as a political strategy, okay. pivot away from it because because here's now let's get to the other end of it. So Bill Maher and Scarborough and all those establishment guys put a whole bunch of policies in the woke basket and then say it's all terrible, right? So all the progressive policies, Oh, so this one, defund the police, etc. Uh, but then they throw in Medicare for all, 
and you know higher wages and all these things. And so wait a minute, is that's not, I mean, that doesn't make any sense at all. So I don't even know what Bill Maher thinks is core democratic policies. Because whenever you have a progressive who fights for those core democratic policies, like more health care, better wages, Bill Maher and Joe Scarborough crap all over them. Well, right? I don't know about Joe Scarborough, but when it comes to Bill Maher, he broke away from the culture of the current Democratic Party over these social issues in particular. And he's gotten some grief for it. No, he's, I, you're right, yeah. Anna, you're right. Uh, verbally, rhetorically, right. he does that. There's one other issue that he, he broke away on or whatever. But when it comes to politicians who are in favor, like Bernie 26, forget 2020, 2016, pure economic populist. You don't know, he wasn't woke, there was none of that stuff. All right. there was was universal health care, higher minimum wage, etc. And Bill Maher was like, no, no, not Bernie Sanders. Yeah. Woke, 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 no, I hate him, I hate him. Joe Scarborough, hate him. Chris Matthews, he's gonna execute. These people say that because they actually know basic economics and you don't. That's why Bernie Sanders will never be president of anyone. Bernie Sanders managed to make one person wealthy and that's him. Yeah, so this is uh, your socialism right there.